tonight on First at 9, this Thursday, the 25th of July 2024. Dates fixed. Election Commission to announce dates for the presidential election through a Gazette notification tomorrow. Expensive candidacy. Election Commission proposes to increase the amount charged from candidates as election deposits. Battle intensifies. Minister Dr. Vijay Das Rajapaksha and Field Marshal Sarat Fonseca announced their candidacies for the upcoming presidential election. Unanimously passed. Parliament passes Public Finance Management Bill and the Economic Transformation Bill without a vote. This is Adhavarana First at Nine. From Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to Sri Lanka's premier primetime English news bulletin, other than a first at nine. I am Tarindu Mahendra, joining you with the latest in Sri Lanka and from around the world. Now, in a long-awaited development, the Election Commission today announced that the dates for the upcoming presidential election will be revealed by means of an extraordinary Gazette notification tomorrow. Issuing a statement today, the Commission noted that the Gazette notification will include the date for proclaiming the election as well as the date for accepting nominations. Chairman of the Election Commission, RML Ratnaika, said the Commission has selected the best and closest date which falls after the 17th of September to hold polls for the presidential election. As per the Presidential Elections Act and the Constitution of Sri Lanka, it is mandatory to hold the 2024 presidential election during the time period spanning from the 16th of September to the 15th of October 2024. Addressing a media briefing last week, the Election Commission revealed that dates for the presidential election will be announced before the end of July. Against this backdrop, the Election Commission, which convened today, issued a statement noting that the Commission has decided to publish the Extraordinary Gazette notification to announce the date for proclaiming the presidential election and the nomination date in accordance with the provisions of the Presidential Elections Act No. 15 of 1981 tomorrow. It was decided to publish the notice regarding the presidential election tomorrow. Accordingly, the relevant notice will be handed over to the Department of Government Printing tomorrow. The date of accepting nominations, locations where nominations will be accepted, as well as the date on which polls will be held, will be mentioned in the relevant notice. We have selected the best and closest date which falls after the 17th of September to hold the presidential poll. The date for the poll and the date for calling nominations will be announced once the Gazette notification is issued. No change can be made thereafter. Crunchy goodness for hunger on the go. Justice Minister Dr. Vijay Das Rajapaksha and Field Marshal Sarat Fonseca both officially announced their candidacies for the upcoming presidential election. However, neither the Justice Minister nor the former Army Commander revealed what parties they would represent at the presidential poll. Minister of Justice, Prison Affairs and Constitutional Reforms Dr. Vijay Dasarajapaksha during a media briefing at the Independence Square in Colombo this morning officially announced that he will contest the upcoming presidential election. The 2024 presidential election will be a turning point that determines our future. I am contesting this election for the victory of the Sri Lankan state and people. Urgent action is needed to create a righteous nation and a free tomorrow. I am ready to be a pioneer of that movement. I expect all of your blessings for my efforts. In the meantime, Field Marshal Sarat Fonseca too formally announced his candidacy for the 2024 presidential election. Fonseca, who was elected to parliament in 2019 as a member of the Samagi Janabala Vega, also functioned as the party's chairman. However, in the recent past, he was vocal in his criticism of SJB leader Sajid Premadasa and his actions, which led to his dismissal from his position in the SJB. Against such a backdrop, the former army commander officially announced today that he will contest the upcoming presidential election. Taking to X, Fonseca highlighted the need for a country free of corruption and invited all Sri Lankans to join him in taking the country forward. Horizon Campus 2024 Intake. Register now. 
Sama Gijana Balavege MP Tushar Indunil Amarasena expressed that the announcement of Dr. Vijay Das of Rajapaksha contesting the upcoming presidential election is a welcome development for the SJB's election hopes. With that, let's turn to the latest developments in the political arena as competition intensifies with the fast approaching elections. We acknowledge Field Marshal Sarath Fonseca's right to dream of being the president. However, that dream will end when he wakes up. He does not have a voter base. As you may recall, last time he contested, he only received 5,000 votes. In 2015, Sarath Fonseca contested the general election alone under the flaming torch symbol. However, he could not become an MP. Dr. Vijaydas Rajapaksha is not affiliated with Sajid Premadasa's camp. I must emphasize that his announcement to contest the presidential election is welcome news for the SJB. Some of them are MPs who I entered parliament through the National List in 2005. We should not overthink these matters. To win an election, you must have a nationwide organized program. We are ready for that. Let's see what will happen during the elections. Even if he implements actions and policies that are against our interest, we have not done anything to inconvenience the government or disrupt the political stability of the country. However, supporting him has caused divisions within the party. This is not something to hide. This is the reason why candidates are being proposed at various stages. We will make suitable political decisions for this country while protecting the party. We are currently in discussions with President Ranil Vikram Singha. If we find common ground, then we can discuss the presidential election. Commissioner General of Elections Saman Sri Ratnayake revealed that a cabinet paper proposing the increase of the amount charged from candidates as election deposits has been presented to the cabinet. During a meeting at the Sectoral Oversight Committee on an Open and Accountable Government, Ratnayake requested the government approve the cabinet paper and draft it into law before the upcoming presidential election. As discussed earlier, a cabinet paper was presented in this regard. We were informed not to apply ink to voters' fingernails. Addition to hold this practice can only be taken when an election is called. Will be allocated to import ink. If not, the cost incurred will be between 8 and 8.5 million rupees. Further, the cost involved in the deployment of around 14,000 officials for three days can also be reduced. A cabinet paper has been presented with regard to the election deposits. However, it has yet to become law. So far during the election history, none of the candidates other than the two main candidates have recorded their election deposits. A common thing among most of the candidates is that they use state resources, including postal services and airtime, to publicize someone else. These resources are maintained with the public funds, at least if the candidate contests for their own ideology or a policy that can be justified. That is why we decided to increase the amount charged for election deposits. We proposed 3.1 million rupees for an independent candidate. A portion of that amount is unredeemable because once they place their deposits, the basic expenditure can be covered by that amount. The election deposits for a candidate contesting for a party is 2.5 million rupees. We request that the cabinet approve the proposal before this election. Even though we say that a person's vote is a secret, it cannot be applied to a disabled person who requires the support of another person to cast his or her vote. Not all Sri Lankans are familiar with the Braille system. Taking other countries into consideration, we decided to use a tactile ballot this time. We conducted a mock poll in several provinces by allowing the disabled to cast their vote using tactile ballots. We took the decision to introduce the tactile ballots for the disabled in the upcoming election. The Public Finance Management Bill and the Economic Transformation Bill were passed in Parliament today with amendments and without a vote. Amendments were incorporated into the bills during the committee stage and subsequently the third reading was passed without a vote. 
The Economic Transformation Bill sets ambitious targets for the country's economy for the next two and a half decades. According to the government, both the Economic Transformation Bill and the Public Finance Management Bill are designed to enhance the management of public finances, thereby safeguarding against future economic downturns. With that, let's have a look at some of the views expressed in Parliament today. Through the Public Finance Management Bill and the Economic Transformation Bill, the government has presented its program which aims to maintain a better macroeconomic framework and fiscal discipline to Parliament today. Lakshman Kiriyalla tells us to resign from our government portfolios. Back then, the opposition leader was given the chance to take over the government. They could have thought about the country by leaving their political stance aside. At that moment, Ranil Vikramasinghe accepted the responsibility. We did not request him first. We resigned from our positions. However, we had to take over the responsibility again because they failed to accept the responsibility. What is explained by these acts are the steps to prevent the country from falling into a crisis again in the future. As a whole, the opposition is against this bill because they know that they are unable to deceive the people by promising them things that are outside of this framework in order to secure their power. <laughs> It was then President Gotabe Rajapaksha who told us to summon the Central Bank Governor and the Treasury Secretary to our office to get an idea of how the country had collapsed. However, we presented a set of conditions. We did not want to join hands with the thieves and we are happy about that. We have breathing space thanks to the agreements President Ranil Vikramasinghe in his capacity as the Minister of Finance signed with the International Monetary Fund. If the opposition is planning to amend the agreement next year, then the country will collapse once again by being unable to pay salaries and pensions. The agreement Ranil Vikramasinghe has signed with the IMF predicts that there will be a foreign reserve shortage of around 5 billion US dollars in 2025. If you will continue to act in this manner, the country will collapse once again. Those who cast their vote against this act will be unable to govern a country. Please understand that Samakhi Janabalavege is not against the Public Finance Management Bill. We support the act. However, there are certain issues with this bill. There is no mention of accountability in this bill. We request the government to include clauses on accountability even at the committee stage. We are of the view that Sri Lanka should undergo a complete economic transformation. We want a change that can be felt by the public. We do not want changes that were made with the intention of showcasing statistics to the IMF. During this period, the opposition was only focused on detecting printing errors in the bills that we presented. They did not support us in negotiating with the IMF. Did they support us in passing acts that were crucial to the government by taking the country into account? Can a government whose tenure is about to end legalize a national policy framework? That is our main problem. The government portrays some conditions they agreed with the IMF, which they have mentioned in the first chapter of this bill, as a national policy framework. It was he who served as the national policy advisor to former President Gotabe Rajapaksa. It was he who prepared the speeches of the former president and the policies of his government. The decision not to approach the IMF was made by him. As a result, the country collapsed and Gotabe Rajapaksa had to resign. Our houses were also torched. If he knew the mistake he committed, he could have accepted it and taken over the responsibility of rectifying it. However, he let the country collapse and crossed over to the opposition. He is now pointing the finger at us for what happened. It is unfair. He also conducted sessions for us. If he had executed what he said, we wouldn't have been able to resurrect this country. It was you who gave recommendations when appointing officials. After destroying this country, do not try to blame those who are trying to resurrect the country. It is obvious that the country will collapse if your economic policies are implemented under a government led by Sajid Premadasa. Oh, but you might have to
President Ranil Vikram Singh highlighted the need for a conductive environment to groom new generations of bhikkhu and bhikkhuni in the country and reaffirmed the government's unwavering commitment to advancing Buddhist education in Sri Lanka in spite of the challenges faced by the country. He made this statement during a scholarship award ceremony at Temple Trees. During the scholarship award ceremony held at Temple Trees yesterday, 3,000 scholarships were awarded to assist student monks, Silamatas at Piriven and Silamata educational institutions and lay students across the country. This was part of the Presidential Scholarship Program 2024 organized by the President's Fund. <laughs> We have introduced several scholarship programs to assist talented students from the low-income families in continuing their education. Due to the prevailing economic issues, local communities are unable to fully support rural temples, which poses difficulties for monks. It is imperative that we prevent the decline of Buddhist education. Therefore, we have implemented a scholarship program specifically for the Bhikkhu Society. Through this initiative, we aim to ensure monks can pursue their education. In the context of the Buddha Sasana, it is crucial to cultivate a conducive environment for grooming a new generation of bhikkhu. We must persist in enhancing Buddhist education throughout the country. Reflecting on the establishment of the Piriven system, I had the privilege of contributing to its inception in the past. I must emphasize that despite the challenges our country faces, we are unwavering in our commitment to this responsibility. Star dishwash belly tell indul basu in sede. Star dishwash magic tapika. Welcome back. Now this just in, Prime Minister Dinesh Gunavardhana is expected to make a special statement in Parliament tomorrow with regard to the verdict delivered by the Supreme Court on the Inspector General of Police. The Supreme Court yesterday issued an interim order preventing Deshabandhu Tenukon from performing duties in the position of the Inspector General of Police. The order was made following the consideration of nine petitions filed by several parties including Archbishop of Colombo, His Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit, challenging the decision to appoint Tenukon as the IGP. The Supreme Court also ordered the President to name a suitable person for the post of IGP for the duration of the interim order being enforced against Deshabandhu Tenukon. With that, let's take a look at local news around the island in brief. A cab and a lorry transporting motorcycles collided head-on near the Domagahavela fuel station on the Monaragala Simbalantua main road. Two people stuck inside the cab were rescued following intensive rescue efforts. The two individuals who sustained critical injuries were immediately rushed to the Monaragala district hospital for treatment. Meanwhile, the Moragahahena police arrested four suspects in connection with the robbery of a businessman's residence in Koralaima. The group of suspects are thought to have looted the residence and stolen over 2.5 million rupees in cash and gold. Police investigations revealed that the suspects in question had been working for the businessman in a mine for a span of 15 years and had been living in residences built by the businessman himself. In other local news, an individual intending to sell two elephant pearls worth nearly 10 million rupees was arrested by officers attached to the Police Special Task Force Unit of Puttalam. The suspect was identified as a 29-year-old resident of Badal Kumura. Now in your business news, the Colombo Bourse closed in red today as a result of price losses in counters such as LOLC Holdings, Melsacorp and Hatton National Bank with turnover crossing 503 million rupees. The benchmark All Share Index settled 0.52% lower at 11,640.55 points while the S&P Sri Lanka 20 edged down by 0.80% to close at 3,386.34 points. Mixed interest was observed in Dialogue Asiata, Sampath Bank and LP Finance, whilst retail interest was noted in Brown's Investments, People's Leasing and Finance and Citrus Leisure. The banking sector was the top contributor to the market turnover, while the capital goods sector came in second. Foreign investors closed as net buyers, purchasing stocks worth 13.1 million rupees, while domestic investors were net sellers, offloading shares worth 490.8 million rupees.
Up next, we have Minal Vikramage from Capital Alliance with some thoughts on the current status of the economy in our next segment, Economic Outlook. Looking at the real sector, in June 2024, purchasing managers' indices indicated expansions in both manufacturing and services activities on a month-on-month -month basis. Moving to the monetary sector, the weekly average weighted uh, prime lending rate for the week ending July 19, 2024 increased by 27 basis points to 9.12% compared to the previous week. The average weighted call money rate was recorded at 8.76% on June 19 compared to 8.73% at the end of the previous week. The total outstanding market liquidity was a surplus of 50.07 billion by July 19th compared to a surplus of 80.39 billion by the end of the previous week. Taking a look at the treasury bill auction held yesterday, the yields of all the treasury bills moved downwards with all three tenures ending below 10%. Let's take a look at the rupee exchange rate for the day. Welcome back. Let's take a look at some corporate news in brief. Meanwhile, Windforce PLC announced the successful commissioning of the 389 kilowatt peak ground mount off-grid solar power project in Zanzibar, Tanzania. The project was initially announced in November last year and was completed on the 15th of July 2024 with an extended timeline due to delays in the development of the required infrastructure. Meanwhile, Neptune Recyclers, enabler of recyclable waste management, was honoured with a bronze award in the Solid Waste Recovery or Recycling category at the recent Presidential Environment Awards 2024. The event, organised by the Central Environment Authority, was graced by President Ranit Vikramasinghe. This achievement is attributed to Neptune Recyclers' efforts in promoting the circular economy in Sri Lanka and its commitment towards the preservation of the environment. In other corporate news, the Securities and Exchange Commission of Sri Lanka and the Capital Market Development Authority of the Maldives inked a Memorandum of Understanding on the 21st July in Malé. The MOU enables secondary listings by Maldivian companies on the Colombo Stock Exchange as well as extends to mutual collaboration, capacity building assistance and regulatory information exchanges between the two capital market regulators to ensure compliance with laws and regulations across both jurisdictions. By working together, both nations aim to create a conductive environment for sustainable growth, attract more investments and ultimately enhance the prosperity of their capital markets and economies. And with that, we wrap up tonight's edition of First at Nine. Thank you and have a good night.